Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. John Belkowitz here from Intelligent Concrete. Um, coffee talk this morning. Only thing is I stopped drinking coffee a few months ago. So uh, I'm drinking some fancy schmancy water now that I just finished instead of coffee. Um, so, but anyway, I uh, wanted to go into a, a project that we're kicking off here. Uh, we ran uh, last week and uh, it's, it's really stuff that I love to do and it focuses on colloidal silica for concrete. And, you know, one of the things that I started out in when I first got into colloidal silica for concrete was identifying uh, what things actually went wrong when using colloidal silica for concrete. And, um, you know, it was a, a little over a decade ago, uh, colloidal silica had just become popular in the concrete market. And we had amazing results with the folks that I was working with, they had amazing results in the lab. But when they try to transition that technology to the field, they weren't getting the same features and benefits. And, you know, the biggest thing was, is that um, there was a difference, obviously, between the way we make and mix our, our concrete in the lab and the field and the type of material. So the two biggest things. So when we, what we did in this series is that we're putting together some notes, we're doing some mixes to show you how particle size, surface area, and um, the chemistry of certain cements and admixtures can have an impact on, uh, you know, the way colloidal silica will affect the hydrated cement matrix, both in your fresh and hardened property state. So this first project, we're looking at the impact of colloidal silica size and surface area on the fresh properties of concrete, specifically the slump. Now we're doing a mortar mix here, so, you know, using the word for concrete is a stretch, but this is a very easy way for us to identify how this uh, change in particle size distribution will have at the same replacement content will have an effect on the uh, fresh properties of concrete. Now, we plan to do uh, hardened properties off of this too, but this is probably the most important thing. Now, um, what we did is we used three particle sizes, um, a 3 to 5 nanometer, a 10 to 12 nanometer, and 45 to 47 nanometer. So as we go up in particle size, we go down in reactive surface area. Uh, and we go from 500 meters squared per gram down to uh, about 200 and then 80 meters squared per gram. And what you're going to see is, and it should be expected, is that as we reduce that surface area or that area for instantaneous posilonic reaction, uh, heterogeneous nucleation, and what would cause accelerated cement dissolution, you actually see a, a change in slump. And there are some papers that argue that colloidal silica you know, at specific sizes and particle size distributions um, will give you a, a higher efficiency of your polycarboxylate style high range water reducer. And that's almost like what we're seeing here uh, when we go to that larger particle size or that lower reactive surface area. So uh, excited for you to see the results. Uh, let me know what you think. Our next project is going to look at the same set of mixes, but then we're going to uh, identify how those or how those particle size distributions at the same percentage had an impact on the strength activity index at 28 days. So thanks for joining. Let us know if you got any concrete questions. You're awesome folk.